guys. Thanks for joining us this morning and beginning your week with us. Uh, obviously, an exciting announcement this morning with the addition of uh, Nathan Page and Vinny Prospel. Nothing too formal in terms of an agenda. Ryan's going to be moderating behind the scenes, so you know, be sure to communicate with him if you have questions. And when you do have questions, obviously, uh, if you can't identify yourself in your affiliation, especially for, for Vinny. Um, but really, like I said, nothing too formal. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn over to head coach Seth Everett. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Very excited to add uh, Nathan and Vinny to our coaching staff, uh, two just really incredible people, most importantly, family-oriented, uh, guys that have a, a mindset of lifelong learning and teaching. Uh, that That's their approach to the game of hockey. Uh, just the incredible experience that they're going to bring uh, to our staff and our players, uh, their playing experiences, their post-playing experiences, uh, international experiences, uh, all of those different things. Um, all those things will add to them being role models for our players. Uh, they they both carved out outstanding careers uh, the hard way. Uh, a lot of time in the minors, uh, hard roads, adversity, things that a lot of our, our young men will face, and they'll be able to mentor them through those. Uh, and they're both winners. Uh, they're both winners of people. They're both winners of hockey players. Pacer's a two-time Calder Cup champion as a captain. Uh, Vinny's won two world championships with the Czech Republic. So uh, just immense amount of character, competitiveness, leadership, uh, and experience that they're going to bring to me and our players. Uh, we're excited to have both of them on staff, and I'm looking forward to working with them. Go ahead, Pacer. Thanks, Apps. Um a lot of familiar faces here. Obviously, I've been with this organization for a long time on and off the ice. I think we're going to year 14, uh, being part of the Sabres Art and Amherst that organization. And so I've met a lot of you and obviously did a lot of interviews with several of you. And I think you all know the passion I have for the organization and the Rochester Americans just from talking to me on and off the ice and to have this opportunity to get back on the bench with that in a place that feels like home I, you know that i've lived here for 20 years now i moved here after getting drafted by the sabers not really knowing what i was getting myself into in rochester and it's been home ever since and it always will be home uh, my wife and i no matter where our hockey career took us we always came back and rochester is always home and to be able to coach uh for the rochester americans uh in my hometown essentially obviously my home is saskatchewan but i've been adopted by rochester and to be a coach on that bench in front of my friends and family, it's just an opportunity I'm so grateful to have. And Apps and I have a great relationship. We've been able to work together the last two years. And even before that, uh, I played for, you know, one of his closest friends in Jeff Blashill. And, and Blash and I were really close as a player and coach. And you could just tell when I met Apps, it was an easy transition just because we all kind of had that that friendship and that like mindset that uh, we have a passion for the game of hockey. There's just, uh, you guys all know, I, I, the last three years I barely played and everybody said, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what kind of 37 year old plays 10 games a, a year and runs around and tries to learn center. And it's because I love the game and I still love it. And I love it every day. And to have the opportunity to wake up every morning and, and learn more from apps and Vinny and, and get better as a coach in this end, end of the game. And then, hopefully help these young players, you know, realize their dreams, whether that's Rochester Americans Calder Cup champion or a Buffalo Sabre and a hopefully a Stanley Cup champion. Go ahead, Vinny. Just very excited, very privileged. And uh, I want to thank, uh, thanks, Seth, for uh, giving me the call, uh, talking to me, because uh, since the first time we spoke, it was uh, – I had a great, uh, great feeling about uh, about everything. I mean, there was just one, one little, one little thing regarding my U14 group in uh, in Tampa, and I need to, uh, I needed to uh, make sure that uh, everything is going to be okay with them. And uh, but uh, you know, with the days uh, moving on since the first phone call, I uh, I knew that I uh, I'll be working with uh, with great people and everybody in the organization. Uh, Rochester, Buffalo, they uh, they've been first class. So I uh, very much looking forward to this. It's going to be a huge change of scenery for me and my family. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to it, and uh, it's going to be great. Very very excited. All right, thanks guys. With that, we'll uh, we'll open up for questions. 
Um, to Nathan and then uh, Vinny. Um, Nathan, you, I, the, the kind of the, uh, it changes um, your ability to maybe schedule um, trips and whatever in your previous role, as opposed to a regimented here's here's practice every day, games, whatever. What what appealed to you? And then Vinny, uh, after that, just kind of how did this opportunity come about to to chat with Seth and 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 get acquainted in this organization? Hey, Kev. Yeah. Um, obviously, like Vinny, I coached, helped coach my son's 13U uh, team, the Rochester Junior Americans. So that is a little bit of a sacrifice, obviously, for myself and my wife. Uh, she'll have to take my son to a few extra tournaments. But fortunate enough, I'll be able to probably be at more practices because I'll be home with a little less travel and hopefully schedule uh, some home games on our Sunday off days and some afternoon games when I'm available to go. So there's always a little get, give and take, but this opportunity is an opportunity of a lifetime. And and um, I'll say my son is probably one of the most excited to, for me to have this opportunity to be able to be in the Amherst locker room. So he's been a, one of my biggest supporters. And then Vinny, just kind of, how did this all come about for you and, uh, you know, interviewing with the Amherst and Seth and, and deciding this is the right move. It, it came as a huge surprise because like uh, pretty much uh, two, three weeks ago, I, uh, I had my mind set on uh, going back to, uh, back to Tampa being for third year in a row, sort of uh, away from the pro hockey, but uh, being, uh, being just a full-time dad. And all of a sudden I, uh, I got a phone call from Seth and uh I can say it was uh, it lasted more than one hour that phone call and and we uh, you know we could have spoken pretty much all afternoon uh, my time because uh, you know I was already in check but uh, it was um, it was awesome to talk to uh, talk to said about about hockey practices uh, the the game and everything like that and you know when once I retired. Uh, I uh, I had the opportunity to start scouting for the New York Rangers when Glenn Sader called me, but I only done it for three months because uh, somehow something kind of led me towards the bench because I I believe uh, coaching is the best thing, best next thing to playing, and you can't play forever, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, I think coaching is the is the something that I would love to pursue, and uh, and I didn't. As soon as I started talking to Seth. Uh, I felt that uh, this is going to be a great opportunity personally for me. And I, I didn't want to, let's say I didn't have the balls to pass up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just one more quick thing. Um, you know, any memories of playing against the Amherst? I know it was uh, uh, close to 30 years ago, but, you know, yeah. any times in Rochester, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I remember it was a six hour bus ride. Let's put it <laughs> <in this one. laughs> Well, they've improved Highway 15. It's a lot shorter now. Or quicker really? Now. That's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Mike. Mike H., I should say. Nathan, congratulations on uh, the promotion. You kind of end up in the crosshairs a little now because you're the defense coach for two major, major prospects in Johnson and Novikov, and you've had a relationship with Johnson. We've seen him a lot in camps and that. We just saw Novikov for the first time last week in, in person, so I'm interested in your impression on your relationship with Johnson and how that's developed, and what did you think of Novikov last week? Well, I, of course, I've tracked both those a lot in my previous role as development coach, so I've had a relationship with both Nikita and, and Ryan uh, the last two years. So with Nikita, it's been mostly video and Zoom calls uh, and text messages and any way you can communicate. We had a monthly Zoom call. So Nikita and I have been able to build a relationship, but it was the first time I was able to actually see him in person. So it was really exciting for myself to see him. And he's he's just a genuine, really good person that wants to get better at hockey. Whenever he had a difficult game over there, he was first person he text message was me. Can you help me with the film, break it down? And I just, I look forward to continuing that relationship and helping him grow and hopefully, you know, realize that dream of being an NHL player. And then RJ, uh, we've really developed a special relationship in the last two years. I've been able to see him uh, probably 24 times live and, you know, been with him a lot, spoke with him a lot on the phone and, 
you know, we've kind of built this relationship that it's, you know, I've helped hopefully help them, but it's, it's a friendship as well. And we lean on each other. Sometimes we just have 30 minute phone calls that we don't even talk about hockey. And so I have that, the real comfort level with going in and coaching with them. And I, I believe that he's a little, he's excited for the opportunity for me to coach him as well, just because of the relationship we've been able to build over the past two years. And a question for Seth. Um, I think most of us, Seth thought, that Nathan was probably going to get this position and the other one was a, a real wild card. How much did you value NHL experience when looking for Pekka's replacement? And just how much did, you know, Vinny fill that bill, not just his experience, but the phone call that he referenced? Yeah, I, I did enjoy uh, the uh, the situation that we had where Webby and Pex uh, had a tremendous amount of playing experience. I don't, I have a lot of coaching experience, uh, but that that wasn't going to be the reason I would hire somebody. Uh, to me, you hire people based on who they are first as human beings, uh, the kind of character uh, that they have, uh, the kind of family men they are, uh, and then the ability for us as a staff to have a really strong relationship because the stronger our relationship is, the players see that every day, and it helps strengthen the bond of the players when they see that the staff's in it together. So – um, I didn't think that we'd be able to have uh, 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 even a candidate uh, with Pex's um, playing qualifications. So um, interesting, Vinny and I had a phone call probably six years ago uh, when I was at the U.S. National Program. Uh, we were connected by a mutual friend uh, just to talk hockey development. He was coaching youth hockey in the Tampa Scorpions program at the time. And I was really impressed that a player with 1,100 pro NHL games did uh, didn't feel he had all the answers when it came to coaching. Uh, that that struck me. And, and all I remember about that conversation is how easy the conversation was for two guys that had never met each other. So fast forward six years later, um, talking to my former head coach at Ferris State that I played for, he was just calling to catch up after our playoff run. And I he's like, do you get some time off? I said, unfortunately, I have to hire two assistants. I said that Pacers probably a likely candidate. And he asked me, do I have an open mind? I, I said, yeah, absolutely. And he said, what about Vinny Prospel? And my my answer was, how the heck do you know Vinny Prospel? <laughs> well, Vinny this past year went around uh, to, to guys that he had played for, Mike Sullivan, Jim Montgomery, played with uh, Tortorella, to just learn coaching and, and to soak it up and pick up things. And he had a former player in Tampa Bay that played at Ferris State. Uh, Fair State is not a glamorous place to go visit in the middle of the winter. Uh, and he went up there for a week behind the scenes, fully immersed himself. And again, I thought that that said a lot about uh, how seriously he takes the profession. Uh, it was a great little reminder from my former head coach uh, about that Vinny's out there. I remember the great conversation we had. Uh, that led to me reaching out to Vinny and, and uh, led to probably four or five, six phone calls. And, and then here we are today. And one last one for me, Vinny, uh, Mike Harrington here at the Buffalo News. The um, the culture in Rochester and Buffalo has dramatically changed in the last couple of years. There's a lot more prospects. There's a lot more success on the ice. From your playing days, just how much did you value the culture in your locker room, the culture that the coaching staff created for the players? Well, it it's so obviously one of the one of the keys uh, you know going uh, going forward i mean everything uh, everything starts with the right mindset right attitude and uh, and basically a culture to come in and uh, and never stop uh, learning never stop uh, improving and uh, you you totally right last couple of years uh, basically the the nhl or or how do you want to how do you want to call it the world of hockey is looking at the buffalo sabers as a as an organization that is uh, that is on the rise, right? Because of the because of the right draft picks. I mean, I'm very excited about uh, going in there and and looking at the younger players. I mean, Nathan was talking about it. Seth is talking about it. Uh, he sent me a text message last week from the development camp that how many uh, great young hockey players uh, are uh, um, are there on the ice and uh, and who we going to be uh, working with. And it's a uh, it's very very exciting and it's uh it's a something that uh that i don't take uh lightly because it's a it's a it's a lot of uh responsibility because uh obviously uh there's a lot of 
input from everybody in the organization who they who the you know gm is going to draft right and uh and these guys they have their uh, whole life ahead of them they have their whole career in front of them and we are there to uh, to help them to uh, to achieve their dream thanks very much go ahead bill hi Vinny. bill happy times herald uh I was just wondering, you know, you, you went and coached in Czech. Uh, just wondering why you wanted to do that, how that challenged you, and how that made you a better coach, I guess. Okay, so uh, uh, basically uh, it came at the time when uh, when my uh, former team, the, the youth hockey team in Tampa, all the boys were 18 years old, and they uh, they were done with the high school, and they, uh, they went their separate ways, and... Uh, and uh, I felt like after five years uh, being uh, being with them, and let's say three, four times a week, I uh, I uh, I started uh, to think like what it would be like if I would uh, have a, a a team that I can spend uh, spend six, seven uh, seven days a week with them on the ice, being with them basically the full full time because. Uh, even though it's a uh, youth hockey, it's still not uh, still not pro hockey. You you know still the parents pay for the for the ice and everything that comes with that for the tournaments for the travel. It's not uh, you know hockey is very expensive sport. So in this way, there were times when we just couldn't practice as as much. And I always wanted to uh, know how it is and what can you do as a coach with the team if you have them on the ice every day, because I had the opportunity to live my dream, be as a hockey player and and play for a long time. And basically uh, you on the ice uh, daily. Right. And if you have a, if you have a coach who, who gives you uh, one day off a week, then great. That's awesome. But it's a basically every day, uh, every day uh, opportunity to, uh, to be with those hockey players and those guys. So, I just basically when uh, when I was uh, when I was there coaching, I, I was in touch with uh, with my uh, GM in uh, in uh, in my hometown, and he knew that I'm I'm coming up to the end with these boys, and he asked me he asked me if I would love to uh, to uh, come back to my uh, back to my hometown where I grew up and and try to help them to. Uh, to be better and get them from the second division to the top league in a in a Czech Republic, and I started thinking about it. You know, we uh, we felt as a family that it's going to be a great opportunity after all these years to uh, to go back to uh, Czech Republic for some time and spend some time here with uh, with uh, with our extended family, and that's why we uh, I made that decision to uh, to say yes to it. But it came at the same time as with. Uh, these uh, eighteen-year-old boys were going their separate ways, you know. Nathan, just how many times a week were you on the ice with the Amherst, uh these past couple of years? It seemed like at least a couple, or at least a few times a month. I mean, how many? I guess. Yeah, I'd say a few times a month would be the best way to characterize it. Uh, with our my former job. It, it worked around their schedule, but also my schedule. Mostly I would travel during the weekends to see our prospects. And if there was a Monday or Tuesday practice that we could jump in as a staff, that's usually when uh, when the development staff would come in, especially if there's two days before I, for a game, we're able to absolutely have a little longer practice. So we'd be able to help out and maybe do a little extra after. Thank you. Hey, uh, Nathan, Mike Catalana, congratulations. Thanks, Mike. Hey, um, you know, this is a great opportunity for you, but you mentioned it's a change in life and this time and with everything you got going on. I don't know if it's fair to ask, but would this could this really only happen in Rochester for you now? Or would you have been able to, you know, you could have gotten other opportunities or maybe even had other opportunities? Um, probably that's it's a difficult question to answer if the right opportunity came along, but most likely it would have been difficult to leave right now. This is just the perfect opportunity for my family and myself uh, with my, with my sons being 12, my daughter, 10, this is just an ideal situation after moving them around their whole life because of my job it's and my wife works. So 
this is home base and this is where our, our family is. This is where my wife's family is. This is where my children's friends are. And right now, this is probably the only one that would really work. I was the, my previous job, but we were fortunate. Same thing. I was able to stay here, live here. I travel on the weekends, but I was always home here in Rochester. And and my, my family knows my passion and my passion to get into this. And if the opportunity arose, we probably would have made it work, <laughs> to be honest, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't have been ideal. Like this is a dream come true and a perfect ideal situation. Uh, but I wouldn't say I would have said no to another opportunity, like uh, you know, but this is the, literally the ideal situation. And to follow up what Mike was talking about with culture, you've been around this organization for a, long, a lot of time and been around Rochester. The way it's changed, it certainly, or has been enhanced under Seth and what they've done, did that play a role at all in making this jump in terms of what you've seen the Amherst do, what it's been like there, what it's been like in Buffalo, all those things? It seems like the right time to for that to be joining the organization in this kind of role. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, you know, I'm close friends with Chris Taylor when he brought me back here to be a player the last three years and you were at the games I barely played, but it was to help bring that culture back to the to try to create what I'd been able to create in Grand Rapids, all the success we had there through those years. And it's kind of continue on into this, you know, different regime and with apps now, and, and you just see it building momentum and it's extremely exciting time to be a part of that. And I think culture is, it's so important. A lot of these guys in Buffalo now I played with in my last stint here and to be able to see them at training camp and talk to them, just the excitement and how they feel. I, I think Jacob Bryce and Tage Thompson pulled me aside that when I first got this job, I was at training camp and they said, Patriot, you just don't know. It's it, You wouldn't believe what it's like now compared to before. We just love going to the rink. It's like we don't want to leave the rink. And it, for me, getting starting this job, being a player for all this long and being in this organization for so long, then coming on the other side and hearing that from them, it got me really excited to to move forward in this position and now into a new role uh, down in, with Rochester. But it's all one family. You know, the one one Buffalo, we're all under the same wing and we're all pushing the, rowing the boat the same direction. Great. Thank you. Vinny, I just wonder if, and I'm kind of circling back here. Uh, I didn't see other people with questions. Um, you're you arrive in in Hershey way back when, um, probably not knowing the language very well. Um, there's an old story of how Václav became Vinny um, yeah. from my cousin Vinny. Um, <laughs> just how difficult is that transition, perhaps, for you know a young player coming over from Europe? And I think. Um, a lot of us don't understand just how hard that is off the ice. And perhaps Seth also is that a, you know, a bit of a, a you know, a way that it, it makes some sense that, that Vinny can help with that transition perhaps and, and, and kind of lead understanding off the ice uh, issues or, you know, adjustments. Well, I think. Uh, is it for me or for Seth? Uh, for you, Vinny, and then Seth, if he has thoughts after. Thank you. Okay. Well, you know, well, uh, it's it's thirty years now. I mean, it's a it, it's a long time, but I'll, I'll tell you the. Uh, I guess the world was a little bit different. There were no uh, no cell phones, obviously. No, uh, not as uh, many computers or opportunities, you know, to stay in touch with uh, with your family. But uh, you make the transition because uh, you're following your dream. And uh, you know, hockey is uh, is a is always been my love. It's uh, besides my family, it's the it's the best thing that ever happened to me. So it's a uh, you know, it was an easy decision for me, even though I I, I really had no idea about uh, English language, about uh, what's uh, what's gonna be uh, waiting for me in Philadelphia when I land there. But uh, you know, I, I guess the one of the one of the most important thing what happened with me was that the Flyers put me with the American family and I stayed with them for three years. They showed me the, I guess, uh, if you can say, they showed me the robes, they showed me the lifestyle, they showed me how to pay a with check back then, you know, and uh, and showed me around. I didn't have a car my whole first year in a in minors and uh, Mitch Lamoro or or some of the uh, veteran players on the, on the team, they... Uh, they always uh, took me home or or picked me up uh, on their way to the rink. So uh, you just had to you just had to speak. You you had to learn 
English. And, uh, you know, to this day, I would say that was the best thing for me that ever happened, that uh, I uh, I was there by myself from uh, as a as a as a Czech. I had to learn the language. And uh, at times it was difficult because it's not uh, it's not always fun if you don't understand what the uh, teammates or uh, or coaches are saying. But uh, it also makes you stronger. And uh, and quickly you learn the better you are, and uh, and it's always really 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 important to to communicate with your teammates, with your coaches, with the people in the organization. And if you uh, if you make that commitment, if you make that jump, then it's uh, it's a lot easier to uh, to play and and live there. And uh, you know somebody here, Nathan was saying how uh, how how nice it is for the boys now in Buffalo to go to the ring on daily basis. If you know the language, if you understand, if you can laugh with the players, and uh, if you can be part of that locker room, it makes the transition that much easier. And I think for, from my perspective, uh, what Vinny had to go through uh, all those years ago is an added bonus. It's not why uh, why we hired him. Uh, we hired him because the kind of person he is uh, and the kind of mentor we think he's going to be for our players, uh, I think an added bonus to it is uh, I can talk to our players about, um, you know, why guys have made it over my coaching career. These guys have made it for these reasons, or Jack Quinn did this, or JJ Paterka did this. And I can relay all those coaching experiences, but, you know, uh, that's an experience that that I haven't even come close to living, uh, is coming over from a foreign country, not knowing the language, living on your own, things that Kulik and Paterka uh, and, and Rosine and Cedarquist and, and you know, Kisakov and next year, Noichev and Novikov are going through. Um, and he's lived that. And those experiences will be very valuable to share with our players. Great. Thanks, guys. Seth, I got one, one other quick one for you. Uh, down in the release was the mention of your extension. So I'm just interested in just what's it like for you to, again, recommit to the Sabres and the Amherst and have them recommit to you? And just how much of that is a certain feeling of a little unfinished business and the fact you might be right back in it again come next spring? I don't think it's anything about my extension. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So um, I'm extremely excited. Uh, as I said earlier in the media availability at development camp, um, I love my job. I love who I work for. I love who I work with. Uh, and I take a lot of pride in being part of the Sabres organization and leading the Amherst. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm really proud of what we've been building the last couple of years. I apologize. The sunlight keeps chasing me. I'm going to move over a little bit here. Um, it's a good problem to have the sun chasing us right now. Um, the, uh, I'm really proud of what we've been building the last couple of years. Um, the work we've done, the players we've put onto the NHL, the success that we've had. Uh, but yeah, I, you do feel a little bit of unfinished business. Uh, there's still a little bit of, you know, a little bitterness, a little anger, a little disappointment uh, from, from coming some, so close and, and not being able to finish it off. So um, those things drive you. They motivate you. You put a chip on your shoulder because of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, my greatest motivation every day um, as a coach is, is to wake up and try to make our players better. Um, so as much as a Calder cup, uh, would be amazing, uh, to bring back to Rochester. And, and that certainly is our goal. Uh, my greatest motivators try to wake up and help our players chase their dreams. Thanks. Seth. You go ahead, Don, if you have one. Yeah. Uh, Vinny, welcome. Uh, Don Stevens is my name. Certainly glad to have you with us. Uh, in your conversations with uh, Coach Apps and, and uh, Jason uh, Carmanos, the, the Sabres people, uh, Kevin Adams and so on and so forth, do, are you finding that your coaching philosophy is the same or are you going to have to realign the way you think about coaching and coming here or what? Well, thank you, first of all. And uh, second of all, when I uh, when I talked to Seth, when I talked to uh, Jason and, and Kevin, uh, it was uh, – it was almost like uh, that we were already uh, working together. It was almost it was like we could just uh, go uh, go on and on about about the uh, the way the hockey should be played, uh, about the way the practice should be run, and and everything else that comes with that. So um, 
I uh, I didn't really know what to expect when I talked to uh, Jason and Kevin uh, via Zoom, and uh, they had a couple of questions for me regarding what I would do at uh, at certain time, uh, let's say after practice or during the practice, or how I would react with a certain player. But uh, we had, uh, you know, it was uh, it felt uh, it felt real, it felt uh, normal, and it was not uh, like. Uh, you know how I would put it. It just uh, kind of felt like with said, I, I can talk hockey all day, and it uh, you know the time is just fly by, and that's a you know you can you know if you don't have the passion for the for the sport or if you don't have the passion for what you do, then uh, no matter what you do, you will not like it. But uh, Said uh, said loves his uh, his job. He just uh, he just said that, and uh, and I had the I have the same uh, same feeling. And it's uh, you know one thing that I would add. It's uh, I and I believe I already mentioned that. It's like the people, the people that you talk to, how uh, how da- how great they are, how uh, how welcoming they are, and how everything feels uh, easy. So the transition, hopefully, and the hockey that comes with that, everything is going to be great. Uh, watching uh, Coach Apps and his crew over the over the years, and and uh, the way they kind of do things, it, uh, it's actually like there's a whole lot more coaching going on off the ice than there is on the ice, and and especially with things like video, uh, which has come into being in the last few years. I'm an old schooler before there was video, so so I, I remember that, which uh, probably you were more like too at at one time way back when. But uh, is that uh, part of the game that you've really? Uh, moved into is the video type coaching and the coaching off the ice. Is that for me again? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll tell you one thing. I think it's a video. It's a it's a great added tool because uh, the best thing about it is when the players see themselves on the ice. Because it's one thing when you're trying to tell them, let's say, right at the right uh, during the during the game when you're on the bench and you just tell them. Sometimes they have the tendencies, and believe me, I know because I was the same way as a player. I didn't want to believe my coach, but then you see yourself on the on the video, and it uh, you know really there is no escape. So it's a it's a great added tool, and uh, and I believe it's uh, it, it's really important for uh, you know it's always important for me as a coach to to show the player what he could be doing better. Well, again, Vinny, congratulations and and welcome. And uh, Pacher, I imagine you're pretty happy to be back on the bus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a few bus rides, not as many as you, Donnie. I got about yeah. what fifteen years worth, not not thirty five. Or <laughs> what are we at now? <laughs> uh, t- I'm, I'm losing count. I think this will be thirty eight or something here in Rochester. But, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that, that's a lot of bus rides. But so I've been one of the few that's had the privilege to uh, maybe like Kevin O as we watched you since you first came into the pro game and uh, and had gone step by step. Is this all part of a plan or are you just taking it as it comes or what? I don't think there's any specific plan uh, to hockey because it's hockey. You never know. There's so much unpredictability. The plan is the passion I have for hockey. And that's my plan is to always be part of hockey and it, being able to wake up every morning knowing my job is as a player or a coach and I'm in hockey is just a dream come true and a, and a privilege. And I am very grateful for that. And I don't take, uh, you know, to take it lightly. And so the plan is, Donnie, is to do this till I remember when I people ask me about how long I'll play, I'll say, well, I'll play till they rip my skates off. And I did that. And you saw it. COVID ripped my skates off. <laughs> so I'll keep coaching until they they rip the computer or whatever the, the whistle out of my hands. And that that's how that always be the plan. And my love for hockey all has never changed or wavered. And to be able to do that in, in an organization in a city that I have such a passion for, that's it's family. It's, it's not just a city. This is home is, is an added bonus. Well, that's great. It's going to be good to be able to spend more time with you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Warren. Go ahead, Kev. Uh, Seth, I just had one one thing. Um, obviously, results and development of players and advancement is pretty good validation of what's happening here. But is there something also to be said that you know the outside world, the the, uh, the hockey world, is is validating what's being done here by the poaching of your assistants? <laughs> um, good to see the state of Minnesota in the background there. 
Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, well, there's four states up there where, where the four of us were born. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, you know, I guess I've never put a lot of time into worrying about what others think, um, trying to, you know, do the best thing for our players and for our organization. But um, when it comes to, to Pex and Webby, uh, you know, I'm just extremely proud of them, excited for them. Uh, they're great friends. I'll be friends with them the rest of my life. Uh, they're guys that that give everything. Um, they they gave all of themselves uh, to the Americans, to their to the players. Um, they helped our players in so many different ways in the last couple of years, and uh, you know that's a dream for them is is to get back to the National Hockey League and and uh, something they did as players. Now they're doing as coaches. So um, I do think it's uh, it's a great sign that we're doing the right things, and other people are acknowledging that. But but uh, that's certainly not something I'm all that worried about. I'm just happy for those two. Great, thanks.